Hello and welcome to the Little Miss Sewing Studio. My name's Nicola and I'm the founder of Little Miss Sew and Sew and this is our new weekly vlog, Midweek Makes. So really pleased you're here to see part two or week two of our new weekly vlog. Each week I'm going to be looking at various crafting and dressmaking projects. Some of them we sell in the shop, some of them we don't, but always something that I'm going to be offer you value. So something that you as um, a YouTube subscriber will be able to get value from watching. So today I am going to be showing you how to make the Billy top. So it's the Tilly and the Buttons pattern, the Billy, um, all on the overlocker. So let me tell you a bit about this pattern. If you're not already familiar with it, which I'm sure loads of you are, but if you're not, Tilly and the Buttons have produced, um, and I think this is a couple of years old now, this pattern, this brilliant pattern, which is great for beginners, but also more advanced dressmakers, especially if you're new to working with stretch fabric. The Billy has various options, and it can be made in two shorter sweater style versions, one with puffy sleeves, the other one with straight sleeves. And then we've got, again, the longer dress version. This is the dress that I'm wearing. I'm not gonna stand up because I'll probably knock something over, but the dress version has got pockets and I'm making, I'm wearing the flat sleeved version of it. But I do have a version at home with puffy sleeves, which is rather fabulous. So today, I am going to be showing you how to make the plain sweatshirt top using the overlocker. However, this can be made also on the sewing machine. So if you do just want to know about how to make this on the sewing machine, follow the way that we put this top together, but either use a zigzag, a small zigzag stitch on your machine because the, the stitch has got to stretch along with the fabric or you can use one of these new Metla Seraflex threads. These are amazing invention. These threads, I don't know if you're gonna see this on the camera, but they, you probably won't, but you're gonna to have to take my word for it. They're threads that you can sew with, but they have a slight stretch to it. So it means that you can sew with a straight stitch, but also um, that stitch is going to move with the stretchy fibers of the knit fabric. So they're the options, but the construction, whether you sew it on an overlocker or on a standard sewing machine, and the way we put the garment together, is going to be exactly the same. So if you're going to be following this as a bit of a guide to making the top, then do make sure you pre-wash your fabric first. This means that once you've pre-washed it, you've pre-shrunk it. So any shrinking that's gonna happen within the first wash happens within that pre-wash, so that when you make your garment, it's gonna fit you straight away. And I think that's it, so go ahead, pre-wash your fabric and cut your pattern pieces out if you're gonna be following this, um, this supporting tutorial. Right, so we have cut out all of our pattern pieces. Starting from this end, I've got my front piece, I've got my back piece, I've got my two sleeve pieces. I've also got in some cuffing fabric, I, um, excuse the state of my patterns, these are very well used. Um, I've got the cuffing for the sleeves, so I've got two pieces here. I have got my neckband and I've got two pieces cut out on the fold for my hemband. So I'm gonna put those aside. I'm also gonna put aside the sleeve pieces because we don't need those right now. Okay, we're gonna start by sewing the front piece and the back piece together. So we're gonna lay these right sides together and we're only going to be sewing these shoulder seams at the top. Now you would have, hopefully, you have measured out and cut out all your little notches which are indicated on the pattern. And we are going to put those two shoulder pieces together, matching up those notches. And I suggest that if you haven't got some already, do get hold of some of these wonder clips because when sewing on the overlocker, 
clips are the best thing to use as you're more likely to take a clip out in time rather than sew over a sewing needle once you sew over, sorry, not a sewing needle, a pin. Once you sew over a pin on an overlocker, you're basically going to really break the, and blunt the blade and probably break a needle. So it's really best to use these wonder clips. Okay, so I'm ready to sew. I've put my front piece to my back piece. I've lined up the shoulder seams and I'm going to start sewing. Okay, so looking at my overlocker, you can see that there are four dials. These are for each of the threads that make up the overlocked stitch. The first two are, as you can see, and it's very kindly um, labelled for you, you've got your left needle and your right needle. And then the next two threads are your upper and your lower loopers. So these are your straight stitches, the left and the right, and the loopers are the stitches that um, basically loop in between the two straight stitches to create the overlocked stitch. Now the overlocked stitch um, moves which means you can sew stretch fabric with it because it will move with the fabric. If when you sew your fabric together the stitch looks a bit loopy, maybe too loopy along the edge, then it is usually the loopers that need turning up a little bit and you can do this just go by half a point each time so maybe just moving your loopers up to three and a half or four or just moving it up half a point um, each time and just have a test with your fabric to see how that works. I'm going to keep mine set at three because it seems to work quite nicely with my fabric but do try your fabric first if it's looking a bit loopy a bit loose then just tighten up your loopers first before you start touching your left and your right needles. Okay, let's start with the sewing. I'm not going to lift my presser foot because the feed dogs start quite early on and you can keep your presser foot down using the overlocker and just start sewing. You can see I've got a tail left here from a previous sew. I'm going to keep that as it is and I'm going to lay my fabric down. Now your seam allowances are marked out, well my seam allowances are marked out on the machine. I'm going to use this edge seam allowance as my guide and that is about a centimetre from the blade which means it will be about a centimetre and a half from the needles. Now the first thing that you see and the first thing that your fabric hits is the blade and that is just there and that moves up and down. So when you sew, it will trim the fabric before it hits the needles and the stitch begins. So once your stitch starts, it would have already been trimmed and you can see on the plate here, I've got some guidelines. Okay, if you're worried about the seam allowance, then just measure from the needle and put maybe a piece of masking tape, depending on what the seam allowance guide is that you want to use along this plate here. Okay, so let's get going. As you can see, I'm not going to lift the presser foot. I'm just going to pop my fabric just underneath the lip there and I'm going to start. Now, overlockers sew really quickly and you can see just here, I'm starting to have the fabric trim. I'm going to take that clip out. They go quick and once you go fast, they make an awful lot of noise. <laughs> Okay. When you get to the end of your row of stitching, just keep on stitching. And this is called chaining off. There we go. Now, I'm gonna leave a nice long chain. I've got a little cutter on the side of my machine just here, like you would do a sewing machine, but this isn't standard. So either get a small pair of snips um, and just cut that off. Okay. So there's my row of stitching. As you can see, it's all lying nice and flat. If the stitch was too tight, you would see this starting to bulk a little bit. Bulk, is that the word? But if the stitch was too tight, you'd see that starting to move, but that looks just about right and I haven't got any loops. So I'm gonna continue sewing and I'm gonna leave my ends because these will be chopped off shortly. 
once we start sewing more pieces, once we sew the arms together. So you don't need to worry about finishing these threads because we're going to be attaching the sleeves to our shoulders. Hmm. Right, so I'm going to sew the other side. There it is. I'm just going to align up those fabrics. I'm going to use my same seam allowance guide. There we go, so it hits the blade first and then it hits the needles to be stitched. And there we have it. I'm just gonna move this out of the way. There is the two shoulder seams sewn together. Okay, so we're going to make the neckband piece now. So we're just going to get that piece of fabric, fold it right sides together, and we're going to sew along that short edge just there to create the neckband. we've um, sewn that together we're then going to fold it out so that we are folding it in half just like so and we're going to give it a press and that creates the nice neck bands okay so go ahead and give it a press now Okay, so once you've folded your neckband in half and you've given it a press, also hopefully you've given your shoulder seams a press, um, I've snipped off the tails of my overlocked threads just so they're not in the way. Okay, so you want to lay your bodice out flat and know which side is your front and which side is your back. I know that this half of the bodice is my back and that's because on the armhole there's two notches. So on the armhole of the back bodice, there will all, you, on, on most patterns, you will always see two notches. And on the front bodice, there's only one notch. So I know that this is my back and this is my front. I'm going to start by finding the halfway point of the front and the back. And this is the only time really you can use pins if you're using an overlocker. I'm going to mark the front and the back with a pin. So I'm just doing that by folding it in half, making a little finger seam, a finger press. And I'm just gonna pop that pin in there. Okay. I'm also going to mark out my the quarter um, marks. Quarter marks, I think that makes sense. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna pull that neckline out and pinch it just there. So I know that that's the quarter of the neckline. And this is gonna help evenly place the neckband. Right, there we go. So once I've done that, we're now going to open that back out and we're going to attach the neckband. Now you want that seam at the back, so I know this is my back bodice, and we're going to be placing this on the outside or on the right sides of the neck of, of the bodice. And I'm going to be lining up my seam of the neck piece, the neckband piece, to that back pin. So that's the centre back bodice and I'm going to pin that in place. Actually no I'm not, I'm going to clip that in place because I know last time I used a pin on an overlocker I did break the overlocker. <laughs> well not break it but you know. <laughs> right there is my halfway point of my neckband and again I'm just going to line those up and pin them in place. I'm now going to find the quarter marks of the neckband. There we 
go, it's just there. I'm going to line that up with that pin. And clip it in place. And the same with the other side. Just lining up with that pin. Okay, so now that that has been distributed evenly, so it's attached across each quarter, we can now just ease the neckband in to the neck line of the top. So the neckband is always going to be a little bit tighter than the actual um, neck space of the bodice and that's obviously just to pull it in so we, we don't have gaping neck bands once the garment's made so you just need to stretch out the bodice sorry stretch out the neck band piece with the neckline of the bodice and halfway in between those clips you're going to place another clip so we'll do the same with this one can see that neck piece is, is, is baggy so I'm just going to stretch it all out. It takes a little bit of fiddly and pokery there. <laughs> there we go. So that's, easy, that's been evenly spaced out between those clips and I'm going to work my way around. Then I think I've just got one more to do and then we are all clipped and ready to go. Great. There we have it. So once you've got your eight clips in, we're going to start sewing that together on the overlocker. Okay, to start sewing the neckband, I'm going to need to lift the presser foot because we're not starting at the end of a piece of fabric. We've got to get into the curve. So I'm going to start at my back seam of the neckband. So I'm just going to take that clip out and pop it just under there. Right, I'm going to start sewing. And as I sew, I'm going to guide the neckband into place. So I'm using the same seam, seam allowance guide as before. And as I sew in between clips, I'm going to stretch out the neck piece so that the fabric of the neckline isn't going to ruche up and get caught. So I'm going to stretch it out in between each clip. Thankfully, I've got a clip and not a pin because that might have been a broken blade. <laughs> you can see how handy these wonder clips are. As you're sewing, keep on stretching. And that way we know the neckband has been evenly placed. Nearly there. There we go, I've just got back to the start position, so I'm just going to, oh, I've got a bit of fabric that's gone a bit haywire. Let's just grab that out. Okay, here we go. Once you have 
done that, give it all a press so that your seams are laying nice and flat. Okay, so we're now going to set in the sleeves. You want your bodice right sides up and you're going to lay the corresponding sleeve to the corresponding armhole. And you'll know which one is which because the front of the sleeve has one single snip, as does the front of the armhole. And the back of the sleeve and the back of the armhole, we've got the two slips, um, snips. And so we're going to lay the corresponding sleeves on the correct sides and then just flip it over. Now we're now going to clip our sleeves in place using the notches. So we're going to start in the middle. That middle notch is going to align with the seam. And then we're going to align the two notches at the armhole and on the sleeve. And then we know that they meet at the end. We're gonna see do the same around this side. So I'm gonna make my single notches meet. a clip and then at the end where we know that they're going to meet and all we've got to do now is just ease the rest of the sleeves in to meet so making sure that those curves are nicely pulled out and distributed evenly between the clips. And like we did with the neckband, you're going to be pulling the fabric slightly to make sure that it all fits nice and neatly when we sew it together. There you go. Great, I think there's just one more to do there. And then we're gonna sew that into place on your overlocker. Right, we're going to start sewing the edge of the armhole. And just move your fabric and work its way around the curve. Remembering to keep stretching in between the clips so that the sleeve is eased nicely into the armhole. And don't forget to take those clips out as you go along. If you're using pins, oh God help you. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear me over the racket of the overlocker. My husband turns the TV up when I'm using it at home. <laughs> it becomes a very noisy house. Okay. So I'm just gently, as I go in around the pins, easing the sleeve into the armhole and following the direction of the curve and there we go one sleeve 
complete. Okay, so we've pressed the seams away from the bodice and now our billy's starting to look like a billy. So we're gonna sew the side seams. So, but this is where we use some notches that we've cut into the fabric when cutting out the pattern pieces. We're gonna start by lining up your seams at the shoulders, at the arms. So get those two seams, making sure that they're nicely lined up. You can trim these off if they're in the way. And then just pop a clip. And get rid of those. Then we're gonna work our way down, matching notches. down to the bottom and then we're going to do the same on the arms. There's a couple of notches there so I'm going to match those up. Way down to where the cuff's going to be inserted. There we go. Okay, so that is going to be one long row of stitching all the way up the side and then across and all the way down the sleeve. Just feeding in from the bottom. There we go, so always remember to remove your clips and your pins. A lot easier to remember to move clips than it is the pins, so keep using those. I'm just gonna lift my presser foot to try and keep my seam allowance pressed away. There we go. I think that worked. <laughs> There we go, that's one long seam all sewn together, all up one side and down the arm. So now go away and do exactly the same with the other side. Okay, so we have not now got our sweatshirt sewn together at the arms and the side seams and we're going to attach the waistband. The waistband has been created in the same way as the neckband. So I'm just gonna open mine up to show you. I've sewn the side seams together with the two pieces on top of each other, right sides together. And I'm going to fold it in half and give it a press. So once you've got your waistband folded in half and pressed, we're going to mark out, just gonna get rid of that hair, there we go. <laughs> we're gonna mark out the halfway points. We've got two um, points already marked out, which is our side seams. So I'm just going to pull this so that the seams are now facing each other. So I know that these two points either side, that's a really bent, blunt pin. Let's try a different one. <laughs> these two points are the halfway points so we can use these as markers okay 
We're going to do the same with the sweatshirt. So just pull it up together so we've got the side seams facing each other. I'm going to mark out those points just here. And just here. Right, so we've marked out the quarter points. We can now go to attaching the waistband. <clears throat> okay, so now I've marked it out, I'm going to place my waist, waistband around the bottom of the sweatshirt. I'm going to be aligning all, the, all of the raw edges, oops, just making sure that those side seams of the waistband are aligned with the side seams of the sweatshirt. So that is the first clip that I'm going to be putting in. So as you can see, we're aligning all of the raw edges. starting with the side seams and just making sure that they are nicely aligned so it's going to be nice and neat once you've sewn it all together. Okay, then I'm going to match the pins at the front and back. So that's the front and back centre points. I'm left-handed, I don't know why I've got everything over on the right-hand side of me. That's better, there we go. Right, so once we've marked out the quarter points, we're then going to find the eighth points. Oops, just gonna need to mat up a bit. There we go. So in between those two quarter points is a halfway point. And this is just so that we're easing that waistband in to the billy top and the waistband is slightly tighter and this is so that it gives you a good fit we don't want a baggy waistband so i'm just going to show you what i'm doing i'm stretching it out to find the halfway point working my fingers in and i'm just going to pop a clip there there you go so you can see we can pull those together so I'm going to do the same in between these two quarter marks. I'm going to pull it nice and taut. Just work my fingers in, so I'm holding it in place. It's a bit fiddly, but I think it's something you just get used to doing. There you go. I'm not going to add any more clips because I'm going to pull the waistband taut as I sew in between each clip. Eight clips is enough. That's my last clip. Just making sure I've got all three layers. Great. That's that done. So we just need to sew that on as we did before with the neckband. So starting at the back and finishing at the back and then tying off your threads. Okay, attaching the cuff. We've got our cuff pieces. As you can see, we're using the ribbing. It stretches one way, but not that way. So making sure that we've got the cuff pieces the right way around. We're gonna fold them right sides together. And then, sew down that long edge. Okay, again, let's get that out of the way. 
And like we did with the waistband and the neckline, it's just a bit smaller. We're going to fold that in half and that creates a lovely cuff. So we're going to do that with the other cuff, this piece here. Give them both a press so that we've got a nice, um, neatly folded <laughs> cuff is what I'm looking for. There we go. So that's one cuff. We're going to do exactly the same with the other and then we're going to attach them. Okay, so grab one of your cuff pieces and we are going to do exactly the same as we did with the neckband and the waistband. But it's just a bit smaller and a little bit fiddlier to sew. So we're just going to pop that inside and line up the raw edges. Start with putting the seams of the cuff and the seams of the sleeve together. And then, there we go, just pulling the cuff piece taut so we can get the other side and attach a clip and then again we're going to get the quarter sections by pulling it taut just aligning those raw edges you might want to uncurl any jersey fabric that might have curled there we go that's better pop in a clip and then doing exactly the same on the other side. So we've used the tension of the cuffs and the sleeve, pulling it to find those quarter sections. Now it's up to you, you might want to put extra clips or pins in. I always find it gets in the way a bit. I pull the fabric along as I go. So I'm going to start at my seam. I'm going to take off the first clip, lift up my presser foot, and pop that underneath. And away we go. So I'm just pulling fabric taut in between clips I get to the end I'm just chaining off clipping it and we just want to do you can either like I said thread the ends back into the stitch but I don't know I, I find just tying a knot absolutely fine and snipping it and there we have a cuff very pretty. Okay, so we've just got the last one to do. And then I think we'll be having the big reveal of how our Billy sweatshirts are looking.
ta-da here we have it the finished billy um i'm really pleased with it if you've made yours as well i hope you are too um i think the contrasting ribbing goes really well with the flowers happy with the lengths um but i'm hoping this tutorial has shown you how straightforward an overlooker is to sew um, a garment together it really is about just being in control of the machine, making sure you're prepared with attaching things like cuffs and that you're putting things in nice and neatly. Then the last stage is just sewing with the overlocker, which really is so straightforward. But just goes to show that this Billy top is really quick and easy to make. The Tilly and the Buttons pattern does have extra versions. So if you wanted to upgrade to a puffy sleeve version of the billy top then you will need your sewing machine to create the gathers but again it is mainly created using the overlocker so i hope you enjoyed the tutorial and i really hope you join us next week for our next midweek makes